Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good morning, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the ITTP COVID-19 International Teleconference on Technology and Policy for supporting implementation of COVID-19 recovery plan in Southeast Asia. May I invite everyone, please kindly fill up your attendance by answering the survey through the link provided in Zoom chat box. Here are some codes of conduct that shall be followed by the conference attendees. Only registered participants can participate in this conference. Those who haven't registered need to do so by filling up the survey through the provided link. Please format your Zoom ID, starting with your institution, title, name, for example, UTM Dr. Hayati. Participants are entitled to a certificate of participation if the survey has been answered. Virtual certificate will be given to the entitled participant no later than seven working days after the conference is completed. Please use the virtual background shared by the committee. Please disable your microphone when the speakers are delivering their speeches. Questions may be asked in Zoom chat box. Please state your name, institution, question accordingly. Only selected questions will be asked during the live session. Unanswered questions in the live Q&A session will be answered on the conference website. The materials will be shared in the ITTP COVID-19 conference website. We would appreciate if you could kindly complete the online survey through links provided in Zoom chat box. Thank you.
Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we have about 15 minutes before we start the session. Please kindly rename your Zoom ID with the format, your institution, title, and name. I would like to remind everyone to please complete your attendance by answering the survey through the link provided in Zoom chat box. Thank you.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi, a very good morning. I'm Hayati, your master of ceremony for today's event. On behalf of the host, I extend our heartiest appreciation to each one of you for being able to virtually attend this program today. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to commence the program with the national anthem of Malaysia, the Republic of Indonesia, and followed by the ASEAN anthem. All attendees are required to pay attention and show proper respect. <laughs>
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi and a very good morning. His Excellency Datuk Lim Jok Hoi, Secretary General ASEAN. His Excellency Engineer Budi Gunadi Sadikin, Minister of Health of Republic of Indonesia. His Excellency Har Manirath, Secretary of State, Ministry of Tourism, Kingdom of Cambodia. Professor Dr. Siriruk Songsibilai, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research and Innovation, Thailand. Also the Chairman of the ASEAN University Network, Board of Trustees. Dr. Imran Pambudi, MPHM, National Health Quarantine, Indonesia, Ministry of Health. Professor Datuk Dr. Ahmad Fauzi Ismail, Vice Chancellor, University Technology Malaysia. Professor Ari Kunchoro, PhD, Rector of Universitas Indonesia. Professor Dr. Iko Supianto, General Chairman of ITTP COVID-19. Presidents, Rectors, Vice Chancellors, Secretaries of Universities in Southeast Asia. ASEAN Secretariat, Senior Officials, Participants, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. Welcome to the ITTP COVID-19 International Teleconference on Technology and Policy for Supporting Implementation of COVID-19 Recovery Plan in Southeast Asia. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 27 leading universities in Southeast Asia have come together with the support from the ASEAN University Network Secretariat, the Executive Office of the President of the Republic of Indonesia, other government agencies and industries to establish a joint initiative to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic together, which is now known as the ITTP COVID-19. It is a three years planned initiative that includes several international programs, such as conferences, webinars, innovation competition, and joint research. This initiative aims to build a common platform for exchanging ideas and insights on the COVID-19 pandemics based on research and experiences, formulate policy recommendations, and identify relevant technologies to support COVID-19 response and recovery plan. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, for the introduction of ITTP COVID-19, let us invite Professor Dr. Iko Suprianto General Chairman of ITTP COVID-19 to brief us on the ITTP COVID-19 International Teleconference. There is an introductory video followed by his speech. Professor Dr. Iko Suprianto, the floor is yours.
Prof, may I request you to mute, unmute yourself, please? His Excellency Datuk Lim Chok Hui, Secretary General of ASEAN, His Excellency Prof Sri Rung Song Sibilai, the Permanent Secretary Minister of Higher Education, Science Research Innovation Thailand, His Excellency Hor Moliroth, State Secretary, Minister of Tourism, Kingdom of Cambodia, Dr. Imran Pambudi, MPSM, Deputy Director, Minister, Ministry of Health of the Republic of Indonesia, Professor Dato, Dr. Ahmad Fauzi bin Ismail, UTM Vice Chancellor, Professor Ari Kunchoro, PhD, Rector of Universitas Indonesia, President of University in Southeast Asia, Honorary Guest, Ladies and Gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi and good morning. It is our great pleasure to welcome you all, His Excellencies, colleagues and students, in this first international teleconference on technologies and policies for supporting COVID-19 response and recovery plan in Southeast Asia. I would like to thank to UTM, University of Indonesia, Pring Songkla University, University of Erlangga, University of Pajajaran, University of Malaya, University of Putra Malaysia, University of Science Malaysia, De La Salle University, and Ateneo de Manila University that host okay, this okay, conference. We would like to thank to the ASEAN Secretariat, Office of the President Staff of the Republic of Indonesia, ASEAN University Network, and other top universities in Southeast Asia that support okay, this conference so that we can have this conference okay, starting today until of 8 August 2021. <clears throat> the objective of this conference is first is to share research findings related to the technology and policy for COVID-19 risk management. To enable the collaboration among ASEAN research innovators, policy makers, and business people to support the implementation plan of ASEAN recovery framework is our second objective. And to formulate policy and solution recommendations for ASEAN communities in accelerating COVID-19 recovery process to achieve SDG 2030 is, okay, the final objective of this conference. The idea to hold this conference has been started around one year ago. Eight, month, um, <clears throat> eight months after first COVID-19 virus detected in Bangkok, 27 university leaders Representatives from ASEAN Secretariat and Associate of Indonesian President Staff have conducted a meeting on 2nd December to discuss for the preparation of ITTP COVID-19. Okay, Since at that time, several activities have been conducted. We have conducted four webinars for policy recommendation formulation, which have been attended by more than 2,000 participants to discuss ASEAN travel certificate, enterprises internationalization, tourism digital learning and digital security standard. Besides, we also established scientific committee okay, to look into research finding related COVID-19 response and recovery plans in the area of health science, social science, technology, and multi-fields. There are around okay, 204 professors and top researchers involved in this initiative for around okay, six months. There are three 135 papers have been accepted to be presented in this conference. And then, okay, in this event, okay, we have, okay, four groups, which is policy discussion will conduct tomorrow, paper presentation will conduct today, and then, okay, culture performance on the 8th of August and product exhibition parallel with this activity. This morning, we will have the opening ceremony and ASEAN leader settings. In the afternoon, we have, okay, the paper pa parallel presentations that we will conduct it by nine universities in parallel. We have also product exhibition from our industry partner. Tomorrow, we will have the group discussion that the leader will present okay, their result and finalize the policy recommendations. After paper presentations, we will have product exhibitions and also okay, we have the award ceremony and culture exposure on 8 August. There are nine best paper awards will be given. Besides, there are three most contributing university awards also will be delivered. Besides, okay, there are 14 universities okay, from 10 countries will share culture performance as COVID-19 solidarity in this ASEAN Day. For this, we would like to invite all participants of this conference also to attend this closing ceremony. 
I would like also to inform that the ITP COVID-19 will not end on 8 August 2021. We will continue this initiative until 2023. We will have okay second and may have okay the third conference that will be hosted by various university. We will also continue our webinar to format policy recommendations, which will be hosted by member university in various topics. We try also to ensure that the formulated policy recommendation can be implemented in South East Asia at the end. Moreover, we will continue and strengthen research, teaching, and innovation collaborations among the university member. For, the purpose, for this purpose, we would like okay, to have continued support from all university members, government agencies, and industry across the ASEAN countries. This support is very important for us to sustain this initiative so that the impact of this activity can be obtained by ASEAN people as our effort to support the implementation of COVID-19 response and recovery plan in Southeast Asia. Last but not least, we have serious event during these three days. Please visit our activities and see you again in the closing ceremony. Short prizes, award, and interesting performance are awaiting you. Thank you and enjoy your day at ITP COVID-19. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Professor Dr. Iko Suprianto, for the introduction to ITTP COVID-19, which houses interesting programs and activities, including parallel presentations, cultural exchange, and continuous program after the teleconference today. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, with great pleasure, I would like to now invite Professor Datuk Dr. Ahmad Fauzi Ismail, Vice Chancellor, University Technology Malaysia, to deliver his welcoming remarks. Please welcome Professor Datuk Dr. Ahmad Fauzi Ismail. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and greetings to all. His Excellency, Datuk Lim Jok Hoi, ASEAN Secretary General, Professor Ari Kuncoro, Rector, Universitas Indonesia, Professor Sirok Song Sivilai, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research and Innovation, Thailand, and Chairman of the AUN Board of Trustees, President of Universities, in Southeast Asia, Professor Iko Suprianto, ITTP COVID-19 General Chairman, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, it is our great pleasure to welcome His Excellencies, colleague, friend and student to the first international teleconference on technologies and policies for supporting <coughs> COVID-19 response and recovery plan in Southeast Asia. ITTP COVID-19. Ladies and gentlemen, ITTP COVID-19 is one of the most important events organized by 27 top universities in Southeast Asia in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. This includes joint research, joint publication, joint webinar, and focus group discussion to initiate, develop, formulate, and publish policies and technologies recommendation to support COVID-19 response and recovery plan in Southeast Asia. I believe the ITTP COVID-19 is a perfect platform for leading academics, industrial experts, consultants, scholars, researchers, government and policymakers with different background to exchange information on current and future technology and policy, as well as to share experience on the implementation of technology and policy roadmap for post-COVID-19 new normal in Southeast Asia. The collaboration involving Southeast Asian countries is not only about sharing the rewards, but it is also on sharing the associated risks. There should be no barrier for working together. Instead, more efforts should be made to complement each other's strength so that breakthrough innovation may emerge and be effectively re replicated across organizations. 
in the time when COVID-19 is wreaking havoc across the world, costing life and disrupting livelihoods, collaboration among the Southeast Asian countries, which is now called the ITTP COVID-19, is the key to building resilience and ensuring the success of COVID-19 recovery efforts, especially in the Southeast Asian region. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, ITTP COVID-19 exemplifies the true spirit of UTM and Vision 2025, where the core values are to develop holistic talent by producing high quality graduates, as well as strengthening UTM's research and development, as well as commercialization and innovation capability and resilience to champion emerging knowledge and research areas. Not only that, but it is also to nurture strategic nexus between university, industry, government, and community, which is called the quadruple helix ecosystem to sustain university growth and also to achieve global eminence as a distinguished Malaysia research university in line with the national and global agenda. Through the ITTP COVID-19, the core values are being instilled by bringing together 27 leading universities in Southeast Asia, together with the support from the ASEAN Secretariat, ASEAN University Network Secretariat, government agencies and industries to establish a joint initiative to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. I am pleased to know that ITTP COVID-19 is paving the way toward a vibrant partnership to propagate and proliferate effective exit strategies for the COVID-19 crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I would like to congratulate the organizing team led by ITTP COVID-19 General Chairman, Professor Iko Suprianto, University Technology Malaysia and Universitas Indonesia, in collaboration with 27 other leading universities in Southeast Asia for the noble initiative to establish a consolidated exit strategy for the COVID-19 crisis. I also wish to thank the speakers and all those who have contributed in one way or another toward making this event a success. To all the participants and attendees, I hope all of you will gain valuable insight and knowledge at ITTP COVID-19. Take care and stay safe. Kerana Tuhan untuk manusia. Thank you. Wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Kerana Tuhan untuk manusia. Thank you, Professor Datuk Dr. Ahmad Fauzi Ismail. As mentioned by Professor Datuk, the recovery plans is made feasible by a strong collaborative nexus under the auspices of ITTP COVID-19. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please join me to invite Professor Ari Kunchoro. Rector of Universitas Indonesia to deliver his welcoming remarks. Professor Ari, the floor is yours. His Excellency, President of the Republic of Indonesia, Mr. Haji Joko Widodo, His Excellency, Prime Minister of Malaysia, Dato Haji Mahyadin bin Muhammad Yassin, His Excellency, ASEAN Secretary General, Dato Lim Tokhoi, Honorable Executive Director of the ASEAN University Network, Dr. Politis. Dira Titi, Honorable Vice Chancellor, University of Technology Malaysia, Prof. Datu Dr. Ahmad Fauzi bin Asmail, respected speaker and research person from various reputable institutions in Southeast Asian uh, countries, distinguished participant of the ITTP COVID-19. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning and warmest greeting from the Green Sustainable Campus of Universitas Indonesia. First of all, let praise our God Almighty for his blessings to all of us. So today we can gather in this event in prosperous, healthy condition. 
We continually pray to him, asking abundant strength to face this COVID-19 pandemic. May he lift up this pandemic from our one earth and let us back to our normal life. I'm honored to welcome all of you to the International Teleconference on Technology and Policy for supporting implementation of COVID-19 response and recovery plan in Southeast Asia Universities of Indonesia, University of Technology Malaysia, jointly initiated this conference as one of our collaborative activities. This teleconference is in line with the mission of Universitas Indonesia to develop science, technology, culture, and art, and dedicated to, to the improvement of human well-being, happiness, and prosperity. In this teleconference, scientists, professionals, and government leaders from ASEAN countries will meet and share their knowledge, invention, and experiences in dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. We expect that this meeting of mine will result in new ideas and inspire new innovation in combating COVID-19 and overcoming its effects. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as we are all aware and have experienced, COVID-19 pandemic is borderless. It has affected almost all aspects of human life. We can say that this pandemic has changed human civilization. As an academic community, we are responsible to participate in national as well as regional and global efforts to control the COVID-19 pandemic. We must share as much as possible contribution to various initiatives in controlling the pandemic, as well as in mitigating and coping with its effect on various development sectors. It is our challenge to shift our research and innovative activities to focus on matters that will improve our resilience. We have to direct our research and innovation to areas that are very much affected by COVID-19 and to aspects that are needed to control the pandemic. In a situation where we experience significant economic reduction, we should relocate our resources to support needed research and innovation. On the other hand, we must maintain the quality of teaching and learning to ensure the provision of quality education. We have to modify and enrich our curriculum and to adjust our teaching and learning method so that we can equip our students with necessary competence to deal with the challenges that they have to face in their future. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, facing these all challenges and priority, we can recognize the two most powerful keyword cooperation and collaboration. In this tough situation, we cannot survive by ourselves. We believe that we cannot save ourselves unless everybody is safe. COVID-19 pandemic is a borderless event. We need to stick together to survive and keep developing. On August 8, 1967, Foreign Minister of Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand signed a document that became the mark of the establishment of the Association of Southeast Asian Nation or ASEAN. The document spelled out that the arm, the aim and purposes of ASEAN were about cooperation in economic, social, cultural, technical, educational, and other fields, and in the promotion of regional peace and stability through abiding respect of justice and the rule of law and adherence to the principle of the United Nations Charter. It proclaimed ASEAN as representing the collective will of the nation of Southeast Asia to bind themselves together in friendship and cooperation and through joint effort and sacrifice, secure for their people and for posterity, the blessing of peace, freedom of prosperity, and this ASEAN spirit is totally relevant with the current situation that we are facing. And we as academic community should show our initiative and leadership in promoting this spirit. In these circumstances, we encourage all of us to strengthen cooperation and collaboration among us. Besides cooperation and collaboration in education and research, we strongly propose to promote our collaboration in regular effort for controlling COVID-19 pandemic and its effect. We expect that this teleconference can be an initial step for bigger collective contribution of ASEAN University to combat the pandemic, to overcome its adverse effect, and to provide the impetus for speedy recovery of the ASEAN region. Distinguished guests, 
ladies and gentlemen, we will not be able to make this teleconference happen without contribution of many parties and many people. First of all, let me deliver my sincere thanks to all the members of the advisory board, steering committee, scientific committee, and organizing committee of the ITTP COVID-19. I'm very proud and grateful for the hard working of all personal info. Thank you so much for your time, thought, and effort to make this teleconference a successful one. My deep thanks and appreciation to 27 universities that have supported this event, participated in all webinar and discussion, and to provide significant contribution. I thank you for your minimal share for this teleconference. Last but not least, I thank all academicians, lecturers, and students who have submitted this paper to be presented in pre-paper presentation session. I also thank all the participants of this teleconference. I hope we will have thoughtful discussion during the session, and may all of you enjoy the teleconference. Thank you so much for your participation. I am looking forward for stronger cooperation and more meaningful collaboration among ASEAN universities. My God bless us. Always. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Professor Ari Kunchoro. I would like to echo significant remarks from Professor Ari, whereby the pandemic has changed the global efforts in terms of sharing initiatives and focusing on improving our resilience. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, for the next agenda, let us now invite Professor Siriru Somsivilai, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research and Innovation, Thailand, also Chairman of the ASEAN University Network Board of Trustees, to deliver his opening remarks. Professor Siriru Somsivilai, please welcome. Professor Iko Supiliano, ITTP COVID-19 General Chairman, Professor Ahmad Fauzi bin Ismail, Vice Chancellor, University of Technology, Malaysia. Professor Ali Kunkolo, Rector of Universitas Indonesia. Honorable guests, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning, Swadhi Club. It is indeed my great pleasure to deliver the opening speech at this important gathering among distinguished participants. I would also like to take this opportunity to congratulate the ITTP COVID-19 Committee for successfully organizing the first international teleconference on technology and policy for supporting implementation of COVID-19 response and recovery plan in Southeast Asia. My sincere appreciation also extends to the University Technology Malaysia and Universitas Indonesia for kindly hosting this event. The ITTP COVID-19 is strategically invented as a platform for university industry and policy collaboration to address several emerging challenges resulting from the pandemic and to support the implementation plan of ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework. I'm also glad to observe the progress of this establishment it has been confirmed by the successful organization of the four expert meetings in travel certificate, enterprise internationalization, mindfulness, tourism funding, and the ASEAN digital security and interoperability standard, the result of which we will further discuss in the upcoming program. On behalf of the ASEAN University Network, AUN, I realize a close alignment between the work of ITTP COVID-19 and the aims of AUN to facilitate, strengthen, and expand collaboration in higher education and serve as the educational platform in contribution to the building of the ASEAN community. In addition to the AUN 30 core members and associate member universities, that are the main force of the network. The AUN also promotes research collaboration through thematic networks, which essentially are the sub-network of specific field of 
collaboration. For example, AUN Southeast Asia Engineering Education Development Framework or AUNC Net. This network is a close collaboration of Japan in engineering field. AUN Health Promotion Network, AUN Human Rights Education, AUN Disability and Public Policy Network, AUN University Social Responsibility and Sustainability Network. And the two networks recently established to strengthen academic cooperation in the areas of technology and innovation that align with the work of ITTP COVID-19, namely the technology enhanced and personalized learning and the university innovation and enterprises networks. These thematic networks are the AUN attempts to promote wider cooperation in the region in specific disciplines and topics. I'm also pleased to announce that the ASEAN Committee on Science, Technology and Innovation, or COSTIC, where I am in my capacity as a chairperson, has agreed to be the lead sectoral body for the cross pillar issues on education in science and technology. We identify five themes for the future COVID-19 collaboration, namely genomics, ASEAN Diagnostic Development Initiatives, Bioservillance Platform for Information Sharing, and the e-capability building to enhance technical experts to strengthen ASEAN preparedness against the pandemics. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, we can hope for the better only when all the attempts are intensified and consolidated to articulate our responses to the different stages of recovery while being prepared to handle the challenges of slow, gradual and cautious return to normal that we all have to cope with. Once again, I wish to extend my appreciation to the experts, speakers and distinguished participants for your precious time and general support which help to make this event possible. I hereby declare the conference open and wish you all the success in your honorable deliberation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Siriru Songsipilai for opening the ITTP COVID-19 International Teleconference on Technology and Policy for supporting implementation of COVID-19 recovery plan in Southeast Asia. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, moving on to the next agenda, we have our most awaited keynote session. With great pleasure, we shall now invite our first keynote speaker, His Excellency Datuk Lim Chok Khoi, Secretary General of ASEAN to deliver his keynote address. His Excellency, the floor is yours. Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege for me to address you today in the opening of the conference of the International Teleconference on technology and policy for supporting implementation of COVID-19 response and recovery plan in Southeast Asia. I would like to extend my gratitude and congratulate the organizer for initiating such a pivotal initiative where academic in the region convened to engage in meaningful research and discussion on COVID-19 recovery. This initiative comes at an opportune time as the region is currently grappling with the raging Delta variant. The fast moving nature of COVID-19 require a whole of the government and a whole of society respond backed by solid and grounded scientific evidence and ensure sustainable and inclusive recovery of the region. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, 
ASEAN is known for its stability and enormous economic potential, considering the region is steady growth prior to the COVID-19 outbreak. ASEAN is also projected to be the fourth largest economy by 2030, putting ASEAN as a competitive trade partners and attractive investment destination. The COVID-19 pandemic, however, has undermined the region's stability. Key sector was severely hit, especially those linked to travels and other context-sensitive sectors, adding millions of unemployment, affecting MSME, women, low-income and informal workers. Whilst the region's economy expected to recover by 4% this year and an even more promising 5.2% next year, this is contingent on our collective ability to contain the virus and the progress of our vaccination programs. ASEAN responded early and swiftly to work together in combating the pandemic since the crisis began. We quickly recognized the need for a whole of ASEAN community approach to ensure the effectiveness of our response to the crisis. This led to the setting up of ASEAN Coordinating Council Working Group on Public Health Emergency, a dedicated ASEAN body comprising senior officials from all three community pillars to coordinate on ASEAN response efforts. This has led to a number of concrete initiatives such as the launch of the COVID-19 Response Fund and the ASEAN Strategic Framework on Public Health Emergency. Beyond health response, as well as efforts to mitigate the social economic impact of the pandemic, ASEAN has kept its market open, its commitment intact, making sure our supply chain are connected, especially for essential products. Apart from strengthening our economic integration agenda, we are also collaborating actively with our external partners, including FDA partners, to overcome the crisis. In addition to issuing a number of joint statements on committing to keep market open and supply chain connected, the recent, recently signed Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership helps to boost the much needed market confidence and support the region's recovery. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to draw your attention to the centerpiece of ASEAN recovery effort, namely the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework, which was adopted at the 37th ASEAN Summit in November 2020. The framework which served as an exit strategy from the crisis, identify five broad strategies around health, human security, economic integration, digital transformation, and more importantly, sustainable and resilient. At the core of the framework is the peoples of ASEAN, especially vulnerable groups and sectors that have been hit hardest. Since the adoption, its adoption to date, the following are key highlights of the ACRF implementation progress. First, ASEAN recognizes the importance in improving the capacity of health sector to effectively respond to the pandemic. To this end, the establishment of the ASEAN Center for Public Health Emergency and Emerging Diseases is an important milestone in ensuring a swift and appropriate response towards a health crisis in the region. This was complemented by the adoption of the regional strategic and action plan of the ASEAN Vaccine Security and Self-Reliance for 2021 and 2025, which will further facilitate vaccine-related collaboration in the region and the commencement of the ASEAN COVID genomic project to support public health policy making in containing the spread of infection and enhance the health system. Second, ASEAN places 
attention and strengthening human security to support resiliency for, for different community by improving the protection and empowerment of all people and all communities. To guide these efforts, immediate priority is to enhance social protection and to strengthen the food security and food safety for vulnerable groups. Initiatives on human resources development are also ongoing with the promotion of reskilling and upskilling for employment, along with ensuring the well-being of our workers through social dialogue and the engagement of multiple stakeholders, including academics, students, and youth. In this regard, I am pleased to acknowledge the support of the ASEAN University Network Secretariat on the initiatives of the ITTP COVID-19 in supporting ASEAN COVID-19 response and recovery plan. Third, ASEAN is leveraging on the momentum of digital transformation to boost the economy and adapt to the post-COVID-19 world. Key priority in this area include promotion of e-commerce as well as other initiative on the use of ICT in education and digital transformation of MSME. For example, we have just launched the ASEAN Access last month, which serves as a one-stop business information gateway for international oriented business to expand their market outreach within the ASEAN and beyond. Last but not least, is our commitment to advance towards a more sustainable and resilient future, ensuring that ASEAN's recovery will be long-lasting and inclusive and environmental responsible, emphasizing that business as usual is no longer an option for ASEAN in the post-pandemic world. ASEAN remains committed to achieving sustainable in all dimensions from investment energy, agriculture, infrastructure, disasters management to financing. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, unprecedented challenges require extraordinary action while significantly altering the social economic landscape of the region. The pandemic can create an opportunities for reforms and innovation solution. Although I'm optimistic that our effort in combating the pandemic, we need to remain vigilant in ensuring that the virus is managed and contained as this is a prerequisite to our recovery. More than ever, collaborative efforts across sector as well as stronger multi-stakeholder partnership, including with the private sector and academic community will be key to ASEAN as it is as it pursues its journey towards a post-pandemic recovery. I thank you for your attention and I wish you a successful conference. Thank you, Your Excellency, and I couldn't agree more on empowering the holistic ASEAN recovery from COVID-19 by creating reforms and solutions by being vigilant in ensuring that the virus is contained and this requires multiple cooperation from various stakeholders. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, before we proceed to the next speaker, may I request for a virtual group photo session with our honorable speakers. May I request everyone to kindly switch on your camera. For your kind information, we have 10 screen pages for the photo session. Therefore, I would appreciate if you could kindly please follow my count. Ready? We start with the first page. One, two, three. And the second page, one, two, three. And the third page, 
One, two, three. And the fourth. One, two, three. The fifth page. One, two, three. The sixth. One, two, three. Seventh. One, two, three. Moving to the eighth. One, two, three. The ninth. One, two, three. And the final page. One, two, three. Thank you very much, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let us now warmly invite the next keynote speaker, His Excellency Hart Manirat, Secretary of State, Ministry of Tourism, Kingdom of Cambodia, to deliver his speech on Cambodia initiative toward implementation of ASEAN tourism digital zoning. Your Excellency, please welcome. May I please request Your Excellency to please unmute your microphone. Thank you. Do you hear me? Yes, Your Excellency. Thank you. Thank you. Excellencies Irbudi Bunadi Sadikin, Ministers of Health of Indonesia, Professor Dr. Ing Eko Supuriyanto, ITTP COVID-19 General Chairman of ASEAN ITTP COVID-19, Professor Ari Kunkoro, Rector of the University of Indonesia, Excellency, ladies, gentlemen, distinguished participants, a very good morning from Phnom Penh. First and foremost, as per the nomination of Dr. Tongkhan, Minister of Tourism of Cambodia, it is a great delight for me today to be virtually particip participating in this international teleconference on technology and policy for supporting implementation of COVID-19 response and recovery plan in Southeast Asia. With you, Honorable Excellency Minister, distinguished ladies and gentlemen from various government body and industry in the region of Southeast Asia, and respectable academic and researcher from ASEAN University Network. Meanwhile, I wish to acknowledge the ITTP COVID-19 Secretariat for their effort in making this conference possible. Before proceeding with more substantive content, may I take a moment to convey the sincere regret of Dr. Tom Khan for being unable to attend this conference by himself. Through me, he wished this gathering very fruitful outcome so that they would be served as valuable input in devising counsel and intuition regarding COVID-19 response and recovery plan in the region of Southeast Asia. Speaking of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has claimed millions of lives and caused substantial disruption onto our way of living, I sincerely express my respectful condolences and concern for the bereaved family, as well as all of the COVID-19 patients in the world, especially in the family of ASEAN members. Distinguished guests, as you may already be aware, COVID-19 pandemic has had a wide-ranging impact on the economy of each country in the ASEAN region, as well as the economy of almost if not all, every country in the world. Economic downturn is inevitable due to the notoriously prolonged travel restriction and lockdown being imposed by government around the world given the actual COVID-19 situation in their respective countries. As a matter of fact, 
eight provinces out of 25 municipalities and provinces of Cambodia. Now, all under, all under lockdown <clears throat> and curfew is taking place in the kingdom as I am speaking. Tourism sector is not exception to the casualty of COVID-19. In fact, it is easily one of the most adversely affected economic sector of a given country. Taking into account the nature of response to the COVID-19 pandemic by the government and people of the country as a single entity and as a part of the interconnected global village. According to the World Tourism Barometer by UNWTO, the world underwent a major decline of 56% in international tourism arrival in the first five months of 2020, resulting in the loss of 320 billion in tourism export. Meanwhile, in 2020, the Asian region painfully endured a dramatic climate of 80.4% 80, 80 and 75.8% in international tourism arrival and tourism reset, respectively. It is in a not so different circumstances from the world and the Asian region. Cambodia has been experiencing a severe setback tourist wise. 2020 saw a sharp decrease of 80.2% in international tourism arrival in Cambodia, which consequently wiped out 330,000 direct tourism jobs and brought over about over 3.3,000. 135 tourism business closure. Based on the National Committee for Tourism Professional of the Ministry of Tourism of Cambodia, there was a carry switch by no less than 30% tourism professional. The Royal Government of Cambodia has been taking and adopting a variety of measures and action in order to address the sweeping social economic impact caused by COVID-19 with a particular focus on tourism sector, relief package have been put in place, including wage subsidy for affected tourism workers, tax holiday for tourism businesses, an online program for upskilling and reskilling impacted tourism professionals. Moreover, the Ministry of Tourism of Cambodia has mapped out and been in the progress of executing the safety and hygiene protocol in various tourism business and facilities such as restaurant, hotel, tourist transportation, domestic tour operator, and community-based tourism. On 30 March, 31st March 2021, the government of Cambodia and those two strategic tourism documents, namely the road from Cambodia tourism promotion and recovery plan during, the, during and post COVID-19, 2021-2025, and the Siem Reap Tourism Development Pastor Plan, 2021-2035. The government of Cambodia has also set a goal to achieve COVID-19 vaccination for 10 million adults by the end of this year. Thus, bringing hope for herd immunity in Cambodia. In line with the roadmap and the vaccination goal, the Ministry of Tourism of Cambodia has been working on the development of the initiative to reopen the country to vaccinate international tourism by the end of this year. The recent, the recent announcement of Cambodia national campaign to vaccinate adolescents aged from, age from 12 to 10, 17 will further strengthen the hope for herd immunity in the country. As of 4th August 2021, 
more than 7.7 million adults have been vaccinated. Given the outstanding progress toward reaching 80% of the population vaccination goal by October, November, together with a plan for the third dose, so-called booster dose, to reinforce the herd immunity, it is a promising encouragement which will play a significant role in reinstating safety, trust, and confidence in both Cambodia domestic and international tourist, thus revitalizing the country tourist sector. It is, however, worth noting that public health safety remains a priority for the initiative to reopen Cambodia to vaccinated international tourists. Dear participants, the COVID-19 has provided a priceless lesson and proved that in time of global crisis, such as pandemic, intentionally and originally concerned, concerned effort and coordinated cooperation is more important than ever for the world as a whole to come on top of this global health tragedy and rebound even stronger than the pre-COVID-19. As exemplary as it is, the Phnom Penh Declaration of, on a more sustainable, inclusive, and resilient ASEAN tourism adopted as the 24th meeting of ASEAN tourism minister in February this year, showcased the spirit of close collaboration among ASEAN member states to revive the ASEAN tourism in the context of COVID-19 and its posts. We are much in debt to the leaders of ASEAN for their wise guidance and recommendation provided at the special ASEAN summit on COVID-19 in April 2020, the 36th and 67th ASEAN summit, as well as related summits. The fact that our ASEAN leaders and partners have been closely collaborating in making recovery plan for ASEAN tourism and carrying out activity in ASEAN tourism strategic plan 2016-2025 make me feel optimistic that we as one region are on the right track to getting out of the COVID-19 crisis. It is a particular privilege and honor for Cambodia to be tasked to lead and coordinate the development of the ASEAN tourism recovery plan, which is now finalized and will be endorsed by ASEAN Tourism Minister within this month. After the investment, Cambodia will be discussing with other ASEAN tourism stakeholders on its implementation. ASEAN has agreed to announce the reopening of ASEAN tourism based on the recovery plan consisting of three phases, reopening, recovery, and resilience. For your kind reminder, reminder, ASEAN has also supported the holding of 2023 Southeast Asia Game in Cambodia as an event to promote the recovery of ASEAN tourism. Combating COVID-19 pandemic has enabled us to obtain new perspective and form new view as to how we conduct our daily life. Today, the world has adopted a much more technological and digital approach in terms of communication and interaction. In this sense, it is of a sense of ASEAN tourism to discover a way and means through which technology and digitalization can be optimally integrated into its operation so as to keep pace with the rest of the world. Therefore, I would like to encourage distinguished speakers and participants of this teleconference to share and exchange their idea, view, and insight with regard to COVID-19 response and recovery plan in Southeast Asia and the future of ASEAN tourism. Last but not least, I do believe that this teleconference will be fruitfully successful and send a much needed message of hope to our region tourism industry. I would like to end my speech by wishing distinguished participants good health and be safe. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.
Your Excellency, thank you very much for sharing with us on ASEAN tourism digital approach as part of the recovery plan for COVID-19. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, with great pleasure, I would like to welcome Honourable Dr. Imran Pambudi, National Health Quarantine, Minister of Health, Republic of Indonesia, to deliver his speech on Indonesia's initiative towards implementation of ASEAN Health and Travel Certificate. Honourable Doctor, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Madam. Uh, Professor Eko Suprianto, ITTP COVID-19 General Chairman, Prof. Datuk Dr. Ahmad Fauzi bin Ismail, Prof. Ari Kuncoro, Prof. Siriru Song Si Pilai, His Excellency Dato Lim Jok Choi, Jok Hoi, and also His Excellency Hor uh, Monirat, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And very good morning to all. On behalf of Ministry of Health of Republic Indonesia, please allow me to deliver my speech for today, which carries the theme of national initiative towards implementation of Asian Health and Travel Certificate. First of all, I would like to thank the ITP COVID-19 Committee that has invited me to join this teleconference. This theme shows the importance of finding balance between controlling COVID-19 transmission and opening border for essential travelers in the region. We appreciate IITP that has issued a policy recommendation on ASEAN Health and Travel Certificate for mobility within ASEAN countries. Among others, and also opening borders is an inevitable element in facilitating day-to-day -day international essential travelers. Therefore, our policies are made dynamic following the current COVID-19 pandemic situation. Slide, please. So, Indonesia recently facing the increase of COVID-19 cases. The response to the situation in Indonesia applies four strategies. First, control COVID-19 transmission lies in public social and health measures by implementing the emergency public activity restriction in the highly transmitted areas, particularly in Java and Bali, among others. Second, improve detection that includes testing and tracing. We are now massively increase our testing before we started at 30,000 tests per day, and now it's reaching more than 200,000 tests per day. And we are aiming to reach 400,000 tests per day. And we already have more than 800 PCR laboratory in the country that can provide the testing facilities for all of the island across the country. We also have 12 genome sequencing labs in Indonesia that have been networked together so we can consequence, so can, so can sequence more uh, often. And last three weeks, we have sequenced more than 800 variants testing and we are aiming every month to sequence more than around uh, 1,500 samples from across the country to identify the new mutation and also to prevent the transmission of the new mutation across the country in Indonesia Island. The new mutation is most likely spread across countries since it is more infectious. Third, vaccination. As of 5th of August 2021, more than 48.5 million people and about 22.3 million people have vaccinated their first dose and second dose of COVID-19 vaccine. So far, the daily maximum vaccination we have done is 1.5 million per day. And we are aiming to increase that above 2 million vaccination per day with the help 
from the police officers and soldiers to mobilize the mass and reach out the grassroots level. Fourth, therapy. We classify and manage hospitalization triage and monitoring home isolation. We converted around 30 to 40 percent hospital beds from total bed capacity for COVID-19 patients. In addition, the government also provides additional of the centralized isolation facilities for COVID-19 patients with mild to moderate symptoms. Securing supply oxygen and medicine are the key, and we also mobilize human resources from internship medical doctors and medical students. We also improve telemedicine to provide drugs for mild positive cases with self-isolated. And in several hybrid cases area, we develop task force to ensure sufficient oxygen supply to the hospital. Slide please. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, now I would like to share with you the Indonesia initiative regarding the international travel policy. Since, 2000, since July 2021, Indonesia current international travel policy regulated by circulate letter of COVID-19 task force number eight in 2021. The international travelers should fulfill the following requirement. Slide, please. Slide, please. Next. Next. Yeah. So, as we can see here in the, the website, and because we uh, uh, update uh, this regulation routinely to the IATA, so travelers are not allowed to enter Indonesia except nationals of Indonesia. The first with a temporary stay permit or permanent stay permit, travelers with a diplomatic or service visa, and stay permit as long as they have not been in India in the past 14 days, and ministerial visit. Currently, we also don't allow transit travelers. Travelers must have a negative COVID-19 PCR test taken at most 72 hours before departure from the first embarkation point. A COVID-19 fully vaccinated vaccination certificate must be shown during departure and arrival. Travelers are subject to COVID-19 PCR test upon arrival and quarantine for eight days. Another PCR test should be done on the seventh day of quarantine. A completed electronic health awareness card, or we call it e-hack, must be presented upon arrival. The card can be obtained before departure at the COVID integrated data by Peduli Lindungi application. I will show you after this one. And all the preventive measures taken by Indonesia aim to avoid the possibility of real-time transmission and international transmission as new mutation may reduce current vaccine efficacy. And the increase of transmission will also directly impact to the burden of healthcare system. According to the data from 28 December 2020 until now, we have collected more than 300,000 specimens from the point of entry for PCR tests. 2.2% of the specimen resulted positive of COVID-19, which equal 6.8 thousand verified derif from first test up on arrival and second test. This number for the emphasize the importance of preventive measures that we have taken. Slide, please. Indonesia has developed COVID-19 integrated data application, namely Peduli Lindungi. This application is an integrated system to help the community in preventing COVID-19 transmission through 
providing as much as relevant information needed to protect themselves, family, and environment from the threats of COVID-19 transmission. This application has several features, such as vaccination registration, QR code scanner to show one COVID-19 and vaccination history in specific public places. 14 days travel history, digital passport that includes the antigen test, PCR test, and vaccination history for air travel, statistic of COVID-19 cases at the nearest area, and risk zone information based on COVID-19 transmission. Important information and also telemetry and also we have. Slide, please. Yeah. So we can see here what's the uh, appearance yeah, of this application in the Android one. So the function of Paduli Lindungi application at the airport have cover uh, access control terminals, control, check-in counter, and also validation process control for required documents, EHEC, COVID-19 PCR test result, and also vaccine certificate international, and also uh, uh, the others. International and high mobility airports provide checkpoint with QR code reader to scan QR code in the peduli lindungi application of travelers. And also the laboratory and healthcare facilities that conduct COVID-19 tests are mandatory to entry data to the new or record application integrated with the peduli lindungi. Slide, please. So this is the appearance of our uh, vaccination certificate within the Peduli Lindungi platform. And ladies and gentlemen, distinguished the delegates, the essential business travel in the region with, uh, will be addressed through ASEAN Travel Corridor Agreement uh, Framework led by political security pillars. The ATCAF aims to facilitate essential business and official travel between and among ASEAN members, member states. While prioritizing public health and safety, particularly in preventing and controlling the transmission of COVID-19 without precluding the application of the framework uh, to other category of travel in the future and taking into account existing bilateral travel corridor of the Asian member states. Slide, please. So, in the conclusion, uh, to flatten the curve of the COVID-19 pandemics, strict public, social, and health measures are crucial to be implemented in several areas with high cases and morbidity. Health protocol as the key element of public social and health measures in guiding the community to practice the new normal needs to be continued to develop. ASEAN, led by the Senior Official Meeting on Health Development, Indonesia, is developing a health protocol that mainly aims to limit the important cases in the region. And it also provides recommendations to related sectors to have preventive measures to limit the spread of infectious disease, such as the point of entry, tourism, government, and business meeting. Healthcare facilities and also workplace and schools. One of the deliverables of this initiative is to have recommendation of elements of health protocol that can be further digitalized for facilitating the cross-border travel arrangement in the region. So we think that Peduli uh, Lindungi uh, application can be uh, shared with the Asian member states for this corridor. Another important issues need to be discussed in the ASEAN in contact tracing protocol uh, to trace cross-border 
trace it through the development of uniform format of sharing data in digital format for case notification and the in the report and workflow of the case notification and communication process among countries across region that allow timely epidemiology investigation during outbreak and promptly deliver notification of the cases with the significant risk of potential cross-border impact through effective communication, including the strengthening of IHR mechanism. This platform should also offer following up the case notification that allows data to be timely shared to the national IHR focal point, including ASEAN EOC network. I also would like to highlight the international travel policy of the country is the national authority according to their national considerations. The travelers' requirements are made dynamic to prevent the COVID-19 transmission based on the most recent situation. The policy recommendation provided by IITP COVID-19 will be beneficial for our reference and consideration to support the existing initiative and to outline the possible future digitalized integrated system in ASEAN. Indonesia is techno technologically ready to support COVID-19 response, including to facilitate the mobility of international essential travels. Indonesia also support for the digitalization of integrated data of COVID-19 for international travel and to mutually recognize in ASEAN member states. It needs to be discussed further and agreed by consensus. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Honorable Dr. Imran Pambudi, thank you for the insightful presentation on crucial steps and initiatives peduli lindungi as part of the recovery plan for the people at large. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the end of the program ITTP COVID-19 International Teleconference on Technology and Policy for supporting implementation of COVID-19 recovery plan in Southeast Asia. Before I close this session, please kindly ensure that you have registered via the link provided to receive the e-certificate. I was made to understand that there will be a special prize for participants who attended the entire event starting from today until the 8th of August. So please stay on until the end of the program at the closing ceremony on 8 August. We thank you for your participation in the session today and we express our heartiest gratitude to all of our distinguished speakers who have spent their time with us this morning. Thank you everyone. Have a great day ahead and please enjoy the rest of the program. ASEAN, one vision, one identity, one community. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. Okay, thank you.